Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful and honored. Lord, we're becoming fellowship in your presence and hear your word. We thank the Lord for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who saved us, who delivered us, who redeemed us, who gave us everlasting, abundant, eternal life. And Lord, we pray for each one of our leaders of our nation. We thank you, Lord, they hearken unto you. We decree and declare, Lord, that we have a peaceful country in Jesus' name. And we pray for all the nation world, that every nation has the gospel preached as a witness. And then they should come. Thank you, Lord, raising up people to take the gospel out. Missionaries, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And Lord, we thank they preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all their needs and protecting them. And we pray for all the body of Christ, that each and every believer become baptized in the Spirit, being taught about who they are in Christ, and going forth in this life, ruling and reigning in Jesus' name. And Father God, I, I thank you, Lord, for anointing me today, that I will be saying do what you have me saying do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me under the Holy Ghost. Now pray for all of us, Lord, as we hear your word. And here, Holy Ghost, will go forth and become doers, word, and let my spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's look at Bibles over there. Mark, please. Let's go to Mark, the Gospel of Mark. We'll go to Mark chapter 11 and read here what Jesus said here. This one, Jesus cursed the fig tree and the withered away, and it got the disciples' attention. Now here in, in verse 23, Jesus said, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever is saying this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast in the city. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall but say it. Therefore I say unto you what things shall desire when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. Notice here, these are two ways as we as believers we can release our faith. One way is by speaking of the problem, mountains. You see Jesus do this here in Mark chapter uh, was it Mark chapter four. Let's go here, verse beginning of verse thirty five. And the same day, it's when Jesus taught about the service of his word. When he was come, they brought, uh, when he was come, he said to them, let us pass on the side. And when they sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, the waves beat ships, so it was now full. And Jesus, the hind bar ship, slipped on a pillow. And they wake him and said, Master, carest thou not to we perish? And he rose and rebuked the wind and said, See, peace be still. And the wind ceased as a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How you have no faith? And they feared exceeding one another, say, What manner of man is this that even the wind is still obey him? Now here's Jesus using the authority that he's given the church, the body of Christ in his name. Actually, you know, God gave mankind dominion over this earth and over every creeping thing upon this earth in Genesis chapter 1, beginning in verse 26 through verse 28. And that's what Adam should have done when the serpent came in the garden and tempted his wife. By, he, he could have rent him out. Today we do that in Jesus' name. Remember, Jesus taught us in Matthew 18, 18. He taught us in, in Matthew 16, 19. He said, Verily I say to you, what's the shall bind on earth should be bound in heaven? What's the shall loose on earth loose them? I think one translation says, whatever you allow, heaven will allow. Whatever you permit, heaven will permit. Well, we can see that in life. And many times in our life, we didn't use our authority. First of all, many of us didn't even know we even had authority. We sort of left everything up to God. Our prayers, maybe, or some of us pray that, you know, God, thy will be done. You know, if you, if you want to heal me, heal me. If not, you know, whatever. Like one person, well, I'm going to say that. But anyway, so, you know, we, we didn't really use our authority. Then we begin to find out. How about when we first heard Mark 11, 23? I don't know about you, but it's a few days before I want to say anything because I begin to realize all these things I've been saying is why I'm in the situations that I'm in. But anyway, we begin to learn about using our authority and still are. And many things you and I suffered in life, we never did really take authority over. We waited until it came upon us or until something happened or wondered why it never did happen. Well, we need to use our authority in Jesus' name. And we need to resist things that would come to us when it comes to stealing, killing, and destroying. Like oppression, fear, doubt, and unbelief. This is one of the reasons why we're taught in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, to cast down imaginations. Every high thing exalts self against the knowledge of God. Bring to captivity a thought against Christ. Many of those things that happened to us started out with our thought life, by how we were thinking about things. Maybe we dwelled on fear or depression or anxiety and began to go in that way. And, you know, then, and then begin to talk about it. I don't know what I'm going to do and talk that way, you know. Then we begin to hear about the authority of the believer. And we found out maybe like scriptures like 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, cast all your cares upon him for he careth you. So we learn, begin to learn, to cast our worries, our concerns, our cares over on the Lord. Every day, as we hear God's Word taught, and it's always important that we always listen to the God's Word being taught. 
Remember, Jesus taught us. He said, take heed what you hear, take heed how you hear. It does make a difference what we hear. He taught us here in, in Mark 4, what we just read from, that the sower sows the word. When we hear the word, it's being sown. Or when we read God's word, like especially when we read it out loud. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that's why you and I always need to keep on hearing God's word and speaking God's word. Remember, God said in Isaiah 55, verse 11, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return me void, but accomplish that please, I please, and prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And then remember there in Mark chapter 16, verse 20, Jesus taught us that I, he went with them, confirming the word with signs following. And God does. He confirms his word. And that's one of the reasons why you and I need to always speak God's word. Because God backs his word. He'll never break his word. He makes a promise. He always keeps it. And as believers, we need to always remind ourselves and encourage ourselves to keep on speaking God's word. Uh, those promises, those exceedingly great and precious promises, is what helps, keeps, uh, helps us to stay out of guilt and condemnation and being taken captive by the enemy. And what we have here where Jesus said there, there in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, we read, that whosoever say in this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast to sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. But she'll believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall what she saith. That's why we need to monitor what we say and use our faith on purpose. Speak, speak God's word on purpose to problems, to situations that we're confronted with. And begin to release our faith in Jesus' name. And by doing so, we're doing exactly what Jesus did when they woke him up in the midst of that storm. And said to him, you know, uh, carest thou not we perish. And what did Jesus do? He spoke to the problem. He took authority over. And the wind ceased. It's a great calm. That got those guys' attention too. Well, who wouldn't, you know? That's how we use our authority. And when anything would come to us, instead of wondering why God let this happen, wonder why God did this, maybe I'm, there's something wrong in my life. I'm sure I've probably done something wrong. I probably don't have enough faith. Never know what God would do. Maybe God's going to work this out for our good. Who knows? You never know. And talk that way? No, that's not using our authority. No, we need to use our authority. Not everybody's going to get on board all about this, you know. Think about when blind Bartimaeus cried out, and, you know, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And what the crowd say? Hey, way to go. You'll get healed. No, that's not what they said. No, they, they get upset at him. So, you know, hold your peace. And we say today, maybe be quiet or shut up. But he cried the much more and got Jesus' attention. I mean, Jesus is walking by. I don't know if he's going to come by here again. And see that guy, or become close to that guy again. He's not, the blind bar man is apparently isn't going to take any chances. So he cried out for Jesus even more. Now what did he get? He got scolded for doing this. Remember when David said what he was going to do to Goliath and talked about what he was going to do to him. Wonder why no one else has done anything to it. Well, what the brothers did? They said, "We know your pride, known as your heart." You see how they they they're trying to discourage him. And in Saul, he doesn't understand what even David's probably talking about. But nevertheless, David went in and did this. So you see, there, there'll be opposition to using your authority from other people. Maybe your family members or loved ones or church or ministry or, or Christians, whoever, you know, can understand why you're holding fast your profession of faith. Well, you know, you don't want to get strife on this stuff, but nevertheless, we just have to realize that I need to keep doing this. You know, people don't understand this in Christian religion, why you would confess Jesus Christ as Lord. You think about this, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God has raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart, man believe the righteous, with the mouth confession made salvation. And Jesus said there in Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and 33, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. And then in Philippians chapter 2, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's how a person gets to go to heaven is by confessing Jesus Christ as Lord. Now, when I first heard that, when people witnessed to me about, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord? In other words, have you confessed him as your Lord and Savior? Well, not, to, as far as I know, never done that to other people. You know, maybe do it unconsciously, but nevertheless, to become saved, to become born again, an individual has to confess Jesus Christ as their Lord. And, you know, that can be so hard on tradition and religion and, you know, just having, well, I don't believe that way kind of thoughts. You know, Jesus let people know your traditions makes the word of God none effect. 
And religion can even keep a person's eyes and mind blinded from receiving the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. You know, over here, let's go over here to 2 Corinthians, please. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Now the scripture says here, in verse 3 and verse 4, If our gospel be hid, it is hid the damned the lost, in whom the God, this is Satan, the God of this world that blind the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, whose image of God should shine on them. Now think about this. Satan does all he can to keep a person blinded. One way is with just religion and traditions. So if you grew up in church and they didn't preach the gospel, and then someone comes along and talks to you about Jesus Christ, have you received Jesus Christ your Lord? And they're going to lead you in a confession of faith to, re to confess Jesus Christ Lord. That can be very offensive to you. It was to me. That can make me angry. Not only they made me uncomfortable, they, they upset me. But praise God for God's love and grace and mercy and compassion. He kept sending people to me to witness to me. Well, now what I need to do is what? If I'm going to become right with God, I, can con I need to confess Jesus Christ my Lord. See, we got hung up on confessing sins, but that didn't cause us to become born again by confessing our sins. We couldn't confess all of our sins anyway. We didn't know all the ones we've done. But simply confessing Jesus Christ as Lord is how a person gets to go to heaven when they die. It's how a person becomes born again or saved. It's by confessing Jesus Christ as Lord. And we're taught from God's Word to hold fast to our profession of faith. And everything that we're going to accomplish in life, we're going to do this by speaking God's Word. Decreeing, declaring our authority in Jesus' name. And not, not, anything, let, not let anything deter us from doing so. By holding fast our profession of faith. And when we decree and declare that by his stripes we're healed, that's what we need to stay with. When we decree and declare my God supplies all of my need, then we need to decree and declare, as we decree and declare that, we need to stay with it. How do you stay with it? By continually thanking God that he's taking care of it, that I am healed, that, he, that I am prosperous, that he is supplying all of my need. And not give up on that. Not give up on our confession of faith. And so Jesus taught us here that he spoke to the storm. He spoke to his waves. Here got the disciples. None of them are doing it. And they've heard him preach. None of them are doing it. They're not using their authority. Adam didn't use his authority that God had given him in, in Genesis chapter 3. He had authority to go forth and do this. And in Genesis chapter 1. But he didn't use it. He didn't exercise it. And that's what's caused problems in the world and individuals' lives is not the person or persons not using authority. They, I didn't, you know, I didn't know anything about it. I just left, I guess, left everything up to God. If he wants to do it, he'll do it, but if not, his will be done. Well, that's not what we're taught. Jesus taught us, again, what are we buying on earth? Should we bound in heaven? See, if God was, is running everything like people keep saying he is, then first of all, the world would be in a mess. But secondly is that, you know, that, that you wouldn't need to pray. He wouldn't have gave us authority. He wouldn't have gave us the name of Jesus. But he did teach us how to pray. He did teach us how to use the name of Jesus. And that's what we need to do is exercise the authority that God has given us. And not just accept that what happened in life is just God's will. It's not God's will that anyone perish. So all pe God wants all people to receive his son Jesus Christ as Lord. Our responsibility as believers is to get the gospel out. Be a witness. Share Jesus with other people. Our testimony, how we got saved. Show them from the Bible how to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. And then minister to people. Pray with them, agree with them, you know, stand with them, whatever they're believing God for that's based on God's word. But Jesus taught us. He said, you know, the harvest is plenteous. The labors are few. Pray ye therefore, Lord, harvest, that he would send forth labors harvest. Well, if, again, if God was running everything, we wouldn't need to pray. Just He'll send out the labors when he wants to. No, when we pray, God's able to do what he wants to do because he works through the body of Christ. He, you know, Jesus, the head, we're the body. Well, like any of us, our heads can't go somewhere our body doesn't go. So if, we, if we're going to accomplish what God wants us to do, then we need to go forth in Jesus' name and exercise authority, like Jesus taught us. In John chapter 14, verse 12, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than he shall he do, because I go to my Father. Well, we'll go forth and do these works, and we're going to do them in Jesus' name. We're going to do them with the authority that God gave us. We exercise that authority. And, and not just letting things come, steal, kill, and destroy. No, by using your authority. And using the name of Jesus. See, we have all this power and all this authority each and every uh, individual believer has. Because Jesus gave it to us. He said there in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Behold, I give you power. That means authority. I give you power. Tread upon serpents, scorpions, and, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any hurt you. 
Yeah, that's what we're doing, is we go forth in this life as kings and priests in Christ Jesus, ruling and reigning in Christ Jesus, using our authority in Jesus' name. And taking these promises that God gave us in his word, again, they're called exceedingly great and precious promises, and use them and believe them and accept them and say, no, this is what God's word says. And hold God to his word, because he'll never change. He made these promises. He's the one that said, by his stripes were healed. He's the one that said that himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. And he actually means that. And he actually did it. And it's actually the truth. And it'd be, you know, we'd be a hypocrite not to say what God's word says. Because his word is what we go by. And this is what we believe in. What, what the, his word is, is the truth. The truth about any situation or circumstance is God's word. See, sometimes when somebody say, well, I wouldn't want to say if I, I was healed if I wasn't. But the word says we're healed. The word says by his stripes we're healed. And that's how we operate as a believer. We, we call those things in existence. Our body will change for the better as we hold fast to our profession of faith. It has to. I mean, your car has to go the way of the steering wheel. Well, our body is going to go the way of our tongue. And this is, again, another reason why it's so important for you and I to always hold fast to our profession of faith. The enemy, he's Satan. He brings the confusion. He brings the, you know, being disharmony. Everything he can to stir up problems. And cause a person to become discouraged and send people across their path to let them know that's passed away. That's not for us to do today. I never heard anything against 1 Peter 2.24 until after I heard 1 Peter 2.24. I never heard anything about being born again, against being born again, until I found out about being born again. It was after that that the enemy would send confusion to me. People that would try to tell me that that doesn't mean that. I got born again and people told me in my church I didn't need to do that. The church I grew up in. That wasn't necessary. I was already okay with God. Think about this. After you got born again. And then I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, spoke in tongues. Whoa. That really, <laughs> that got some people really upset. Man. So, boy, they'll let you know, you know, what they think about that. Now that's passed away and tell the devil and everything else. Well, it's not. And you shouldn't, people shouldn't talk that way. It's from God. Jesus taught us, if you being evil know how to give good, give good gifts to your father, to your children, excuse me, how much shall your heavenly father give good things that him ask? Well, good things come from God. And the Holy Spirit's good, and he came from Jesus. Jesus told us he did. In Luke chapter 11, verse 13, If you being evil, know how to give, give, give uh, good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? No one ever got something else that asked for the Holy Spirit. Anyone would ask for the Holy Spirit as a believer, that's what they're going to receive is the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus taught us. He's not going to worry about receive something else. You know, so we need to know that God keeps his word. And this is what we do as believers. We, we stand upon God's word. We hold fast to our profession of faith. Sure, this discouragement comes. That's, where, that's one of the reasons why we're taught we walk by faith and not by sight. We went by sight, well, we give up. We went by sight, feelings, and you, we can quit. I mean, think about Abraham. He's getting older every day. He starts out, he can't do this. Now it's getting older, and so is his wife. But they held fast to profession, and they kept giving glory to God. And they kept calling those things that be down as the Lord just by him saying his name's Abraham, he's doing that. Well, and it happened. Over a process of time, the miracle arrived. And this is what we do as believers. We see ourselves with it. Like the scripture said, as a person thinks their heart, so are they. And we need to see ourselves according to what we believe God's word says about us and receive it as God's word, the engrafted word. And thank you, Father God, for this. And this, you know, this is another reason why it's so important for you and I every day to read those promises, go back over them. Remind ourselves, become refreshed. And this is one of the reasons why God told us not to let the word depart from eyes and not let the word depart from our mouth. Remember there in Proverbs 4, the Lord said, My child, my son, attend to my words. Incline there to my saints. That means we're listening to his saints, listen to his word. Every day we need to listen to God's word be taught. From ministers that teach us about who we are in Christ Jesus and how to go forth this life really in the rain. They'll keep us fed on God's word. And so the Lord told us, my son, attend to my words, incline to my saints, let them, my word, let them not depart my eyes. So it's important that we keep God's word before our eyes. And the more, you know, situation that person may be struggling in, the more they need to listen to God's word and cut out other things. A lot of times, you know, we, there's just other things we shouldn't be involved in because we're faced with a situation where we believe in God. We need to do all we can to give ourselves fed on God's word. I mean, you could see people get weak in the natural. Well, they need nourishment. They get some strength. Well, spiritually speaking, you know, we, we don't go by what we've heard. We go by what we're hearing. 
Faith comes by hearing, not by heard. So it's important for us to keep God's word before our eyes because God told us to. And he said, my child, attend to my words, incline to my sayings, let them, my word, let them not depart my eyes. Keep them in the start. For they, my words, their life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Think about it. Life and health. That's what God wants us to have. Jesus came that we might have life and have a more abundant. It's God's will that we live an abundant life and live a healthy life. And having an abundant life is being successful in every area of our life. And we need to choose to side in with God's word. And that's what Jesus came to give us. Not just everlasting eternal life. Thank God for that. But he also gave us abundant life. He wished above all things that we prosper. And be in health. It was our soul prosper. And he told us there in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, This book of law shall not depart out of thy mouth. We say the word of grace today. This book of law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to according to all those written. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt be good success. Now we got scripture teaches that keep God's word in our mouth, and also to keep God's word before our eyes. And thinking on God's word. When situations come, the first thing we need to think about is, well, what does the word say about this? And go to God's word. And it's just good to go over scriptures and keep reading them to ourselves. Promises, keep reading them ourselves until we get built up, until we become confident. See, a person can be faced with a real challenge. Believing God for healing or finances or whatever, um, a loved one they got trouble with. And by taking scripture and reading them to ourselves and listening to them talk over and over again, builds up confidence. Now we still, by going about what we see and what we feel, we could still be facing the same problem. But what happens is by hearing God's word and by exercising God's word, putting it in action and holding God to his word, saying, Father God, I think this is what you said. You said, by your straps I you, and this is what I believe in Jesus' name. Well, by doing that, that builds up confidence because we have a tendency to get weak in confidence, weak in boldness. That we be, and then we begin to stagger. We begin to wonder, well, maybe there's something I'm doing wrong. Maybe I don't have enough faith. Maybe it's not God's will. You never know. You know and we start going back to that area. No, we've got to constantly... Keep our mind focused on those promises. And this is so great that we have God's promises because this is going to reveal to us what God's will is for our life. If you go around and ask Christians what God's will is for our life, we're going to get all kinds of answers with that. Everyone's got a different opinion about what God wants you to have in life. Well, God let us know what he wants us to have in life. He told us. He wants us to prosper. He wants us to have good health. Not just receive healing. Thank God for healing. He wants us to have good health. He doesn't want us to get sick. He doesn't, want us to, he doesn't want us to go broke financially. He wants us to live in abundance. Because think about it. When God showed what he wanted mankind to have when he created the Garden of Eden. And put all this lavish blessings here on this earth. And this is all for Adam and Eve. They got the whole thing. There was nothing there they lacked. They had everything in abundance. And this shows what God's will is. It was this serpent, Satan, that came along that brought the curse. And by doing so, he was able to bring in poverty, sickness, disease, and everything else. There's no lack in heaven, and there was no lack in the garden. It was all abundance. All the emeralds and jewels and gold and everything was on this earth in plentiful. All for mankind. All for God's man that he created. And this is what God wants to say. This is how God exists. This is how heaven is. There's no lack. And Jesus said, as it is in heaven, so be on this earth. But over process of time, all these years... Mankind got sold short, thinking God doesn't want them to have anything. He wants them to, if you do receive Jesus, he wants you to suffer. You know, he wants you, he thinks, you, people are taught that if you, the more you suffer, the more you're going to be able to trust God. God doesn't want to suffer anything that Jesus suffered for us. And people we end up biting into that through religion being taught. And excuses being made for why a person did not receive whatever they were, they need to have in life. But God specifically let us know that he wants us to enjoy life. He gave us peace. He gave us joy. He gave us victory. He made us kings. He made us ambassadors. Think about how ambassadors and kings live. But the church didn't know who they were in Christ Jesus as a whole. And we need to learn everything Jesus did for us, he did, so we could rule and reign in this life. And we need to decide the thing and decree it, declare what the word says, and always just do that. And continually thank God and praise God for all of our blessings. Father God, I thank you in Jesus' name. I'm blessed, I'm healed, I'm old, I'm delivered. My family and loved ones are protected in Jesus' name. And decree and declare what the 91st Psalm says. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, is Psalm 23. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Not struggling, not hard times. Jesus didn't come to make our life harder. He came to make our life easier. He said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. But people got caught up in suffering for Jesus. No, we're not to suffer what Jesus suffered for us. Whatever he took on the cross or whatever God placed upon Jesus, we've been redeemed from. And we've been redeemed from poverty and life. It was God that made Abraham very rich. And all the patriarchs of old that we read about Solomon and David, it was God. And we have the same God they have. We just have a better covenant established on better promises. God gave us all. He made us an heir of Abraham's blessing. That's material. He not only gave us the new birth of baptism in the Holy Spirit, but he also gave us all the material blessings. And he wants us to have good health. He wants our youth to renew, be renewed like the eagles. He wants us to live strong, mentally, physically, emotionally, and be successful in every area of our life. And we just constantly just resist all that other stuff that comes to us to try to talk us out of our blessing. Like they tried to keep blind Bartimaeus from crying out again. And like David's brothers were trying to intimidate David from taking on Goliath. And what, well, look how David talked. He talk, David's talking his covenant. He's going towards this problem with his mouth open, decreeing and declaring what he's going to do to this guy. Today we do that in Jesus' name. We go against the problem, the situation that we're confronted with, with our mouth open, decreeing and declaring everything the Word of God says about us in the situation that we're confronted with. And by doing so, God will always back his word. His word will not return void. And not only that, but demons, problems have to leave when you use the name of Jesus to speak God's word. It's the sword of the spirit that God gave us, the name of Jesus, that God gave us to go forth in this life. And these signs shall follow that and believe in my name. And then we take the name of Jesus and go forth in this life over problems. We're not over people, but we're over problems that come up. And we do that, Jesus, not to use our authority. It's dangerous for us. So we need to always exercise our authority. And our first line of defense is say what the Word of God says about this. Father God, we thank the Lord we was able to come today. I pray for each and every person the Lord's watching. Thank you, Lord. I agree with them. They're healed. They're delivered. Their needs are met in abundance. They've heard from you, God, and are following the direction of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord? Maybe you're not sure. or Maybe you know you've never done it. God wants you to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. So you have eternal life, abundant life, everlasting life. So when you leave this earth, you get to go be Jesus. And not only that, but he wants to take care of you in this life. He wants to become your father. And you can do that, and you can have that in your life by receiving his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says here in Romans chapter 10 how to do this. I'm going to read these scriptures. And if you're not sure if you've done this or you know you haven't done it, let's do it today and receive Jesus Christ as Lord. The Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 10, and verse 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God has raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth the righteous, and with the mouth confession made salvation. Now verse 13 says, For whosoever called upon him Lord shall be saved. Real simple. Confessing Jesus Christ the Lord gives us eternal life. So pray this with me, please. Say this and mean it, and you receive Jesus Christ the Lord. God, I come to you today to receive Jesus Christ my Lord. I believe in my heart, and I confess my mouth that Jesus is the Lord. I believe Jesus crucified, took my sins on the cross, took my judgment of sin, died, was buried, and God, you raised him to death. Jesus, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. And thank you, Jesus, your blood's cleansed me of all sins. And Jesus, I thank you. Now you're my Lord. And when I die, I won't go to hell. God, I thank you that you're always going to take care of me in this life. In Jesus' name. Amen. He prayed that prayer good for you. The most important part was confessing Jesus Christ as the Lord. And if you did that, I'm going to encourage you to get it. If you don't have a Bible, go buy one. Start reading the Gospel of John. And find a church to attend to that preaches Jesus on the way to heaven. Just let the pastor know that you prayed with someone on social media and received Jesus Christ your Lord. That church and pastor help you grow and develop spiritually. And you can start attending there and feeding on the God's Word and get involved with what they're doing for Jesus Christ. If you have prayer requests, if you'd like to, you can email me at jesserichministries.com. We also have uh, our phone conference tonight, 7 o'clock. That's what I call church on the phone. That access on the phone number and access code should be right here on our Facebook page. Take advantage of that. Call in. Call in a little bit early. Fellowship of the Saints. And if you have prayer requests, we usually pray for those too. And we usually have communion, so prepare for that. Till next time, it's Pastor Jesse Richmond. We love you. We're praying for you. And remember, Jesus is the Lord to the glory of God the Father.